Good morning, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. It's Saturday morning, 9.30, bright and early out. It's kind of chilly here in the Hudson Valley, New York. I don't think it's much more than probably 55 degrees right now, but it's such a gorgeous morning. The sun, there's not a cloud in the sky. And we figured we'd come here this morning to talk a little music shop. So I know we're kind of early. So we'll get some, hopefully get some folks on here popping on momentarily. So we'll just kind of uh, give everybody a little lay of the land. Hopefully my, uh, let's check the audio levels here. Why don't we? How are we looking? How are we looking? How are we? Let's get these up just a little bit more. There we go. That should be good. Move the mic over a little bit. Cool. Mr. Grant Arthur, what's happening? Bong along. What's going on? How's everybody doing this morning? I decided to do this outside. It's a little warmer inside, but you know what? It's such a beautiful day, and I got people inside sleeping, and five dogs inside. I figured, you know what? Let me just come outside with Mother Nature and all of you guys. So, uh, from Marty Martin, hey Pete, two forty p.m. here in Ireland. Well, welcome from Ireland, David Mitchell. Good morning. How are you? Hope you guys are doing good. BM Bolt, what's going on? How's everybody doing today? Lay the questions on me. Oh, one little thing for today and for these live shows going forward. Uh, I know last week when we did the live show, we had like a handful of people who were just firing off a million questions. Try and keep your questions to one or two so you give everybody else a chance, all right, rather than just sit here and, you know, give me a machine gun fuselage of questions, all right? We got to, everybody's got to get a chance, okay? And uh, I'm also, I'm going to wait for more people to hop on, but I'm going to also run down the winners so far in our classic live album tournament who have made it onto round two because i know a lot of people were interested in that so we're going to do that as well uh from jeff powers did you make your cd rack yourself and and if you did is there anything you wish you'd done better or not at all no i actually did not um and hey curtis rathburn what's going on uh i did not i when we bought this house back in 2009 i actually hired a contractor to make them because i my wife was like you need a place to put all this stuff uh and if i would um is there anything I wish I did better? No. What I wish is that uh, I built them taller <laughs> because I've run out of room. Um, so I wish I had more put in. Uh, that's the only thing I wish I did different. Otherwise, I love them. Uh, from Robert Last, good morning from the West Coast. Good morning. Wow, it's pretty early out by you. David Mitchell, would love you and JY do a show about the music business since JY has had experience in that arena. Yeah, um, Jeff and I have talked about doing that. Um, he is actually in Ohio right now recording that album okay with the singer hell's bells and uh if you've been following him on uh facebook or youtube he's been actually posting videos and clip it uh snippets and things like that so um yeah once he gets back oh, we'll we'll talk about that uh who else we got here joe haynes good morning pete totally jealous of the cool weather it's going to be 93 today in san antonio yeah I'm, I'm done with that 90 plus degree the funny thing is it's like 50 something degrees today it was i don't think it made it out of the 50s yesterday or the day before but the day before that it was like 90 degrees here so it's like we went from having the air conditioning on to probably needing to put the heat on. I hate that. Uh, what I want is like a month of no air conditioning, no heat, open the windows, and gorgeous fall temperatures. That's what I want. I don't know if you heard that, but there's an owl hooting in the distance. Very cool. Kind of weird this hour of the day to hear them. Usually you hear them late at night. Uh, Anthony, what's going on? How are you? uh from robert what type of cd player do you use uh dude i got like all sorts of cd players in the house uh i have you know i, I don't have a great sound system by any means i have like all little portable cd players that uh that i've had for years that are all over the house uh in my living room i have a um a sony blu-ray system and a uh like what do you call it, a sound bar system with with subwoofer that i play through the tv that's probably my best um piece of equipment that I listen to music on when I really want to just kind of fill the house up, but then I don't you do that too, too often. Um, Oscar Cintron. Hey Pete, good morning from Puerto Rico. What's going on, Oscar? How are you? Uh, bong along. What do you think about the new gentle giant box set? Unburied treasures, 250 pounds, new, new snow tires, one out enter sad face here. Yeah. I mean, here's the deal guys. I have bought like the gentle giant catalog, like a couple times over already on CD and why, and I have a ton of, of gentle giant live cds official and bootlegs all sorts of stuff and while that box set looks amazing and it does just like the wishbone ash box set from a couple of years ago it looks amazing that booklet looks awesome and you know guys i love 
cool packaging and booklets and all that kind of stuff. Um, that's just a lot of money to be buying this stuff all over again. It really is. Uh, if I ever see it like used for like, you know, a hundred bucks or $150 or something, I might spring uh, spring for it. But man, just, it's not, it's not going to happen right now with the holidays coming up and all that other stuff. It's just not going to happen. Tate Davis, what's going on? Good morning. How are you? There have been many bands back in the day that have only released one or two albums before they split up. What bands of this type do you wish released more material? How about Detective, right? That great band Detective from the 70s um, on Swan Song. Man, as those two albums are great. And then poof, gone. It's totally gone. Oh, God, how many more are there? Um, there's plenty of other bands there, at least. You know, well, let's come back to this. That's a good question. That might be a good question. That might be a good topic for a show on its own, like one one or two or three and done bands, right? Uh, Rick LeBont, what, good morning. I know you were a fan of Glenn Hughes, and I wondered if you heard his band California Breed featuring Jason Bonham. It seemed it didn't last long since he joined the Dead Daisies. Well, actually, forget about the Dead Daisies. I mean, the California Breed was done years ago. Uh, I actually liked that album, uh, but what happened there was they released that album. That was like after like Black Country Communion broke up for that that first time there, and uh, Jason and, and Glenn decided to work together. So they got this uh, guitar player singer from New York, who's actually really good. He hasn't been heard from since. Uh, and put together this power trio called California Breed. The album is good. Uh, they Glenn wanted to go out and do like a headlining tour, and or uh, well, the band wanted to go out and do a headlining tour. But there came an opportunity for the band to open up shows for uh, Alter Bridge for not a lot of money, but Glenn just wanted to get out on the road. And Jason was like, yeah, I'm not doing that for no money. So I think Jason went and joined Phil Collins's band. So the kind of seeds for the demise of California breed were set right there. They didn't last much longer than that. So one and done. There's, there's a one and done for you. Right. Uh, who else we got in the house? Geez, all sorts of people here. Hold on a second, guys. Uh, well, let me get back here from BM bolt. Are you a Michael Lee Ferkins fan? More than just a shrapnel shredder. You know, I haven't heard enough of him to say I'm a fan or not. I remember hearing an album or two back, you know, years ago. Really good player. Really good player. Grant Arthur, has your new Angel CD arrived yet? Looking forward to the review. Yes, it has. I actually listened to it uh, twice yesterday and a couple times earlier in the week. Uh, I'm going to get to a review of it, but probably not till I get back from my business trip later this coming week. So pay, maybe Thursday, Friday or over next weekend, you'll see uh, my angel review. Uh, I've been trying to listen to that. You know, I was hoping to get to an Opeth review today. Maybe tomorrow morning we'll see because I'm really digging on that. Hey, Dallas Space Cowboy, what's going on? I'm doing good. Hope you are as well. Milford123, I saw the tubes are playing at Daryl's house later this was there. How big of a venue? I have never been to a show there. I have actually, <laughs> this is crazy. I have actually, I, I was actually supposed to go to two shows there. One, I was supposed to see Wishbone Ash there a few, a bunch of years ago. And my, one of my dogs passed away the same day. So obviously I did not go to that show. And then I was supposed to go see a uh, Graham Bonnet band there last January or this past January. And we had a snowstorm that night. So I have not, the two shows I was scheduled to go to, I did not go to. Uh, I also wanted to go see, um, the aristocrats like about a month ago, but it was like the night before I was scheduled to go somewhere else. And I, no, it was the night before the Rolling Stones. And I had just seen, uh, God, who did I see? Like a couple days before I saw another show, I had an opportunity to go to the aristocrats there and I didn't go because I made three concerts in four days, not going to happen. And then recently, uh, I, I was, I was all, almost set to go see Frank Gambali there. This was just a couple weeks ago, but it was like, the night before I had to go on a business trip or something like that. And I'm like, uh, I just can't do it. So no, I have not seen a show there yet. I will though. Cause it's not that far from me. Uh, where else? Uh, Sierra on cooling. Hey, Pete fan from Ireland. What's going on? Thank you for joining Joseph Weggerson. Pete, what do you think of Roxy music? I like Roxy music. I have a bunch of Roxy music albums on CD. Um, cool stuff. I don't listen to them all the time. I probably haven't taken to them like a lot of other people have, but I do like them. Uh, like I said, I probably have like four or five Roxy music albums, like the classic ones. I, I dig them. It's good. It's good stuff. From Grant Arthur, I saw my local record store. I may just go ahead and pick it up. Uh, what's that? The, the Angel? Oh, yeah. Uh, I would say de definitely get it. You know, it's just be prepared. It doesn't sound like classic classic angel all right frank's vocals are a little different uh punky's guitar playing is great but the tunes are enjoyable it's good and then at the end they do a killer version of tower which you know probably is the best song on the album because it's one of their best songs ever but uh, but i like it it's good it's good stuff Luis Roberto, what's going on pete michael shanker fest like resurrection or revelation better i actually have not gotten the new one yet 
Uh, so I'm supposed to go pick it up fairly soon. So uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I've only heard one song. It was okay. I think the cover is awful. You know, I mean, I don't know what he was thinking there, but um, <laughs> from Heavy Metal Mike, just wanted to check in. Well, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Paul Myers. Hey, Pete, I love Deep Purple's Made in Europe instead of the Japan one. I mean, they're both great, right? You know, we got a lot of people voting on that one from yesterday. I, I grew up on both of them. Uh, and they're both different, obviously, for different reasons. But I, for my money, I think Blackmore is playing on that Made in Europe. And quite frankly, that whole tour, if you guys haven't heard the Grass uh, CD or the uh, Live in uh, in Paris, which is basically the whole last show. My God, Blackmore was on fire on that tour before he bolted to join Rainbow. Uh, I just, man, I love his playing on that Made in Europe. It's just so, so good. I just, I wish that was a double album when it came out. Now we got a hawk somewhere. I don't know if you guys can hear all this, but pretty cool. Uh, from Helgiks. Hell good morning. Ever listened to Kaiser's Orchestra? Incredible band. Their Violetta trilogy is colossal. I have not. From Lonnie V. Hey, Pete from Memphis. Greetings. From Battle Rap Resume. Hey, Pete, thank you for all the amazing videos. Are you a replacements fan at all? No, I've been asked that question numerous times. Sorry, cannot get into them. That's just too weird for me. Uh, Heavy Metal Mike, Steel Panther, what do you think? I don't. I don't just don't get the whole steel panther thing they're good musicians and everything but man their music just doesn't do anything for me mark anderson hey pete love your show would you ever consider doing a show devoted to thrash metal i love the genre um possibly i mean i've covered lots of thrash bands on here um hopefully you caught my uh testament and overkill Todd and slayer top 10 song shows and i did megadeth and metallica i mean go go in the uh go in the playlist there's lots of stuff in the archives i've talked plenty about thrash bands because i love quite a bit of them or quite a few of them, I should say. Mark Anderson, hey, Pete, love your show. Would you ever consider doing a show? You know, I just answered that. Sorry. <laughs> From Robert Last, what do you think of the 50th anniversary box set for Woodstock that cost around $800? It's supposed to cover every minute of the music played at that festival. I haven't seen that. That must be pretty cool. Um, you know, a lot of the bands who played, well, not a lot, but a good amount of the bands who played at that original festival, their full sets have been released in one format or another. So I guess if you're someone who wants, like, every you know minor act who played and every little bit of it um it's a lot of money though you know for me most of most of the bands i really cared about from that festival most of their sets have been released for the most part you know you got santana uh the who credence uh mountain you know you can get all these in some form i know the um jimmy you know most most uh 10 years after i'd like to hear i would like to hear the whole 10 years after set that i would like to hear um Joe Cocker has been released, you know, so a lot of them are already available. From Larry Wawa, greetings from the shores of Lake Superior. Or it must be chill. I bet you it's chillier up by you than it is here. <laughs> from Blackbird's Wrath, good morning, Pete. I've noticed that during Dave Holland's tenure with Judas Priest, he always seems to be overshadowed by the other four members and always had a dispirited look in photos. Could there have been a reason for this? I don't know. I've always heard he's a quiet guy. He was a quiet guy in Trapeze, too. Maybe the fact that he was just, you know, he. I mean not the greatest drummer in the world. He, he fit that era of priest, but um, I mean, you know, you, when you got, uh, and you know, Ian Hill was never at someone to be out in the spotlight either. So I, I just think that the rhythm team in that band, no matter who they are, is kind of takes a back seat to the other three guys. That's just the way it's always been from Paul Myers. Pete, what's your thoughts on deep purple made in Europe with Coverdale? Well, I think I just spoke about that. I love it. Audio files tubes. Are you Tom Schultz, evil twin? I've never been, never been, you know, lately I've been said, I've been told I look like um, Scott Gorham from Thin Lizzy. I don't know. It must be, it must be the uh, salt and pepper hair, I guess. I don't know. Heavy metal Mike, let's talk about ABBA. <clears throat> what do you want to talk about? I dig ABBA. <laughs> I always have. I, I have a very nice ABBA uh, hit set in my collection. I, I like ABBA a lot. Um, that's, that's pop music at its best, in my opinion. From Anders Buas. Have you heard the two albums from Ripdal Tikro, Ronnie Latikro and Terje Ripdal? I have not. Wow, that sounds interesting. I love both those guys. Is that something new? I've never heard that before. From Luis Roberto, The Irishman, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Joe Pesci. Did you like the trailer? Yeah. And you, if you guys have been following this channel for a long time, you know I am a big fan of mob movies and especially any movie that's got De Niro, Pacino, Pesci, uh, you know, um, Harvey Keitel. I mean, I mean, the, the cast is unbelievable. I've been waiting for this movie since the day they announced it, so I can't wait 
I can't wait. From Brian, new sir. Hey, Pete, fall has arrived. Yes, it has. Would you prefer a band perform their complete set in their performance and do away with the obligatory encore or encores that are no longer spontaneous but expected now? I mean, you know, I've been seeing live shows since 1981, and I will... I will admit there are times where having the band go off the stage and have us sit there and clap for and especially when you go to some of these shows like the the older bands, whereas obviously people in the audience are older. It's just it's kind of a chore to sit there and clap for five minutes, wait for them to come out again. And I've been to a lot of shows where, you know, the audience is a lot older and they're kind of like, you know, the band goes off the stage and they clap for like a minute and then like, all right, just come out already. You know, so, yeah, I mean, just play the whole set and say goodnight. And I, I'm fine with that. We don't need that that two minute respite there. Maybe the band does. I don't know. Uh, what else we got here from Metal Conquest? Hey, Pete, are you a New York Yankees fan? No, I'm a Mets fan. All right. You must be new to this channel because I've talked about the Mets quite a bit. No, I'm not a Yankee fan at all. Uh, what else we got here? Larry Wawa, has any album surprised you that it was only done by one person? Um, yeah, a lot of like uh, like black metal albums by like, you know, one guy. Uh, I'm always like, wow, the one guy did all that, made all that noise. You know, it's like, yeah, absolutely. Guys, remember too. Try it if you're if you've been on this chat since the beginning here today. Try not to just fire off five, ten questions. Got to let everybody get a chance here. All right. Um, from David Bella, what's up, David? What CDs do you feel has some of your favorite packaging, photos, biography, etc.? I love the White Snake '87 and slide it in box sets. Great stuff. Um, Jesus, it's a lot of albums with great packaging, man. I mean, I, you can't beat those old Kiss albums, you know. Um, God, I have to think about this. There's so many of them. Iron Maiden Live After Death, you know, killer packaging on that. Uh, some of those Rush albums, too, just great. I don't know, there's so many, man. You, you could talk box sets, you could talk, you know, double albums, all that kind of stuff. From Audiophile Tubes, did you dig the veteran Aussie band The Church? Not really any experience with them at all. Anthony, with Fall in the Air, are there any albums that you plan to get in the mood, that you play to get in the mood, like Songs from the Wood? For me, uh, you know, I'm not one of those, you know, with the exception of the spring and summer, I tend to play a little bit more like Southern rock and classic rock stuff. Uh, I'm not one of those, as my hair is getting all, all over the place. I'm not one of those guys that every season comes around and start listening to different music. I get asked that question all the time. Um, nah, not really. I, I listen to what I listen to regardless of what time of year it is. I just like everything, you know, but uh, like I said, in the summertime, I tend to play, you know, I'll play like Southern rock a lot. You know, we hang out by the pool, um, the stones, you know, a lot of classic rock stuff in the summertime I, I dig on. But, uh, you know, when the weather starts to get colder, I'm still listening to, you know, my normal stuff, you know, hard rock and metal and prog and all that kind of stuff, you know, eh, whatever. He's from Oscar Simon, what do you think about the, whoops, hold on, I lost my place here. Oh, Jesus. That's the one thing about this. Uh, where do we go? Bear with me, guys. Where have we gone? Okay, there we go. What do you think about the White Snake box set? Slide it in, 87, the most recent slip of the tongue. I don't have the slip of the tongue. Uh, I've got the 87 one. I have not gotten the slide it in one. Uh, they're cool, but, you know, they're expensive. And, again, you're buying this stuff for again for, I mean, you know, the 87 one I thought was cool. But, quite frankly, I bought it for the live album, right? It's, uh, you know, I just, it's just, you get to a point where how many, how many times can you keep buying these albums? Uh, but they, you know, they do a nice job because they throw in something in there that hooks you that you got to have. Right. And I'm a big fan. So I, I haven't gotten those yet, but I probably will. Paul Myers, Pete, I love Dora Pesh from Warlock. Most people like Dora Pesh. She's a very nice person. I've met her a couple times. Uh, very cool. Lonnie V, since you featured them on Classic Live Album Wars, I need to go get the live Kansas 2 for the show with all the bonus tracks, not on the original LP, which I did on. Yeah, you need that one. That's a fantastic reissue right there. Um, Heavy Metal Mike, have you ever seen Striker, Canadian metal band? I have not. From Sierra on Cooling, hey, Pete, what do you think of Cheap Trick and the new Who tracks? Uh, I like Cheap Trick. I've always liked Cheap Trick. Um, I can't say that I've been buying their, their new music, um, but I've seen them live so many times, like in the last 10 years or so. They're a fun band. I always like Cheap Trick. And uh, I have not heard any of the new Who tracks. I'm kind of waiting for the album to come out. All right. Uh, what else we got? Blackbird's Wrath. I've taken you up on the homework assignment you've given on the last Q&A and have hopefully turned a handful of people onto this channel and comic book easers. Awesome. Awesome. 
Corky Duke says, from certain angles, Pete looks like Fonzie. I was just told by someone else last week that I look like Henry Winkler. I actually met a coworker last week at a conference I was working in New York City that I had not met before. And he says, he goes, you know what I always like to do with people that I meet for the first time? Uh, I like to discuss who I think they look like, like a, star, a celebrity that they look like. And he goes, you look like Henry Winkler. And I'm like, I was like, all right. So I don't think my nose is quite as big as Henry's, but, you know, I get it. He says, yeah, the hair is just, you know, he's got the same kind of longish, you know, salt and pepper hair. I'm like, all right, all right that's fine. Uh, but I want to go back to Blackbird's Wrath. Yeah, thank you. If everybody, uh, you know, on, on a more serious topic here, if everybody could talk to or recommend this channel to someone they know who does not currently subscribe, uh, I want to build this subscribership uh, by, I want to double it by the time we get to early 2020. All right, we have we have quadrupled it in the last year, uh, and I want to I want I want to get to twenty thousand subscribers. We're gonna we're gonna be at ten before you know it because we're we're just about at nine. Uh, we're we're getting like a thousand a month the way it's going. Uh, so I want to be at twenty by like first in the first quarter of twenty twenty. So if everybody who watches, okay, and subscribes can go talk to one friend or family member, more is always better. Uh, and recommend Sea of Tranquility. On that same token, comic book geezers. I'm going to talk about comic book geezers a little bit here now. So that is the, the sister channel to Sea of Tranquility. That is the channel that I've got going on with my good buddy, Wild Bill. All right. If you are someone, and you could be my age, you could be younger, could be older, it doesn't really matter. If at any point in time you ever uh, loved comic books back in like the 60s, the 70s, maybe the 80s, and you love all those old classic comic books, that's what comic book geezers is all about. Bill and I sit and we talk. We have the extensive comic book collections and we show classic books all the time. We talk about all the classic characters. We do all sorts of fun stuff on there. Uh, my buddy Bill is a, is, a, is a comedian too. So we throw some funny stuff in there. He does, we do little skits. He does impressions. Uh, it's a lot of fun. So please go over here on YouTube and check out Comic Book Geezers. Make sure you subscribe. Tell your friends, right? We're trying to grow that channel. That channel's pretty young, uh, but we've got about 400 subscribers right now. A lot of people seem to be digging it and I love doing it. So if you like to listen to me talk here, uh, and you like comic books a little, you'll probably love me and Bill, Wild Bill, that's the name he goes by, uh, talking about classic comic books and showing some great covers and opening books up and talking about all the classic characters and artists and all that good stuff. All right, back on track. Uh, from Lonnie V, I think Ian Hill is the underappreciated member of Judas Priest. He's their super glue. I mean, hell yeah. He's been there since the beginning, right? He's the, the underappreciated like MVP of that band, always has been. Marty Martin, Goodfellas was a masterpiece. That certainly was. David Mitchell, did you know that the guitarist for Steel Panther was the lead guitarist for Rob Halford's band Halford after he first left Priest? Uh, no, like I said, I don't really follow them that, that closely, so no, I did not know that. Hey, Mar Hill 77, what's going on? Hey, Pete, are you familiar with Kerry Livgren's first solo album, Seeds of Change? It has Ronnie James Dio's two best performances ever on record. Livgren is my favorite musician of all time. Uh, that's a pretty cool album. I wouldn't say it's got Dio's best performances ever because that is has, is on the Rainbow Rising album, in my opinion. But uh, it's, a, it's definitely a good performance by Dio, and it's a good album. I like it. Paul Myers, Casino, and Goodfellas were awesome. Absolutely. I'm a big Scorsese fan. I love those albums. Uh, Heavy Metal Mike, have you seen the Metal Trump videos? What do you think? I have not. David Ryan, without doubt, you had the best music review channel on YouTube. Why, thank you. I appreciate it. So thanks for introducing me, and I am sure many others to such great music. Uh, long may you run. Well, thanks. That's that's the plan, right? Because I love doing this. Uh, Scott McGregor, hey, what's going on? Hey, Pete, are there any instrumental songs you that can move you to tears? Uh, one that comes off... One that comes to mind right off the bat is in memory of Elizabeth Reed. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I'm sure there's more. I'm actually planning on doing, because I had a couple people uh, suggest that I'm going to be doing sometime in the next couple weeks, uh, my top 25 instrumental songs of all time. So stay tuned for that. Uh, from Blackbird's Wrath, what subgenres of rock and or metal go best with what types of films? Jesus. <sighs> I don't know. Well, as as it, since we're talking gangster films here today, um, I think really classic '70s classic rock tunes go great with gangster films, uh, as well as some of that kind of like um, almost like early funky disco stuff works well with any '70s themed film. Okay, I mean, how many times have you seen a Scorsese film or a Tarantino film, for that matter, that centered that has to do it took place in the, in the late '60s or the '70s, and they're playing like classic rock stuff or that you know funky R and B stuff? It's just it's perfect, absolutely perfect for that stuff. Uh, 
the Dallas Space Cowboy. There's something that was on my mind earlier this week that I wanted to get your take on. Okay, well, lay it on me. Uh, Mark Anderson, hey, Pete, are you a fan of death metal? Bands such as Vader, both throw on Cannibal Corpse. Uh, you must be new to the channel because, yes, I am a fan of de uh, death metal. Uh, some of my favorite bands. I love Vader. Uh, both throw I'm not big on. Cannibal Corpse I like. Um, Nile is one of, is probably my favorite death metal band. Uh, I love the early Opeth stuff. Um, God, there's so many death metal bands out there. Uh, Origin, Obscura. Um, Jesus. There's a, have you heard the new um, Nocturnus? You know, of course, we got the sun blasting over my shoulder here. I'm trying to move away from it. Um, hold on. I may have to go to another seat at some point here. Um, but I love death metal. I've, I've been listening to death metal for a long time. Jerry C., good morning. From Dominic Cabot. Pete, sorry if you've answered this before. Do you like the band The Tea Party? Also Rival Sons. I have listened to very little The Tea Party and Rival Sons. I absolutely adore. Uh, guys, I'm going to move my seat here, so bear with me for a second. Because that sun is just blaring in, and it's going to cause problems. 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 Get my Marillion uh, reference there, people. All right. Let's move this around. And we're going to get to that... Um, Bear with me. Bear with me. All right. That's a little better. I think the sun is just not going to cooperate here today because um, it's early and it's blasting from over there. All right. Let's just move this around a little bit. Get my microphone set back up. All right. That's that's good for now. Uh, where were we? Yeah, I love Rival Sons. I am a big fan. That is that that is a band that should be enormous right now. They're not. They're not, which is, you know. Uh, what else? Where do we leave off here? Which artists do you feel put together the best box sets and which do you recommend? Um, I mean, there's so many of them. Um, I've got like two. Like, I've got a Genesis box set that I absolutely love. Jethro Tull had released some great box sets early on, uh, like in the in the mid late '90s. Uh, I have a couple of Gentle Giants that are really good. I have a great Springsteen box set that's just awesome. That um, you know has a lot of like unreleased stuff on it and what have you. So there's so many of them. Uh, all right, so we got uh, the Dallas Space Cowboys back here. Hold on. When I tell people that today's music is shit, uh, they often argue that almost every older generation hates the music of the current generation. Your thoughts? Um, okay, let's. We've talked about this before. All right. It's not that today's music is shit. There is a lot of great new music out there today. All right, especially in the genres that we cover on this channel. Right, rock and metal and prog and jazz and all that kind of stuff. There's plenty of great new bands out there. OK, the music that's shit that you're probably talking about is just the, the mainstream stuff. All right. The top 10. That's crap. We all know that. But to say that today's music in general is shit is absolutely not true. There is so much good new music coming out today that just the, the, the masses don't listen to. All right. So if you're someone who, who says that all the time, you're absolutely not correct. OK, you just need to go find the great new music. That's why that's why you all are hopefully are following this channel. In addition to me talking about all the great old stuff all the time, I talk a lot, and especially on, the, on our website. I talk we, we constantly are reviewing young new bands that play in these styles that we all love. All right. So, no, there's a lot of great new music out there today. The mainstream stuff. I totally agree with you there. Um, being a 21 year old who has had the musical taste of a 40, 50 year old, I often feel alienated. Well, you should. You should. Um, from Joe Haynes, Pete. Oh, hold on. Hold on a second here. Got to find my spot. That's what I hate about this. Uh, where do we leave off? Holy moly. All right, here we go. Joe Haynes. Pete, any opinions on the late great ocean size from Manchester? <clears throat> they were really progressive in its truest sense. Their last album didn't have, didn't have one song in 4-4 four, four time. Worth a listen. Good band. They are done? I didn't know that. Hey, Pete, remember the Kiss, the originals? I certainly do. I certainly do. Lonnie V, also going back to your history of Southern Rock video, I'm glad you dug all the early Charlie Daniels Kama Sutra era albums. Primo stuff. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That is just classic, classic stuff. I totally, uh, hold on, let me remove a spammer here. All right, there we go. Uh, Metal Conquest. Hey, Pete, have you heard of the band Universe from Sweden? Stories from the Old Days is a great song from them. Uh, also a huge fan of the Forgotten Favorites. Thanks for the great content. You're very welcome. No, I have not heard of Universe, to my knowledge. Uh, let's see. What else we got here? 
Jamie, Jamie Hyder, have you checked out the two man band Royal Hunt yet or Royal Blood yet? Like them? Yeah, they're pretty good. I have uh, I think they've heard their first CD. It's pretty good. I don't love it. It's good. Uh, Tate Davis, last one for me today. I've been working on getting into the Trapeze discography lately. I think Medusa is a fantastic album. Do you think that album is their best? Yeah. And then uh, We Are the Music, You Are the Band um, is the second best. Those two are amazing. Amazing, amazing. I'm trying to get away from the sun. Holy cow. Uh, have you met a mic? Rest in peace, Rick Ocasek. Absolutely. Um, Larry Noletti, with your apparently busy schedule and being married, how do you find time to listen to music and enjoy albums or blocks of great music? How often do you listen to favorites? Um, well, you know, I work from home is one. So while I'm working, uh, I usually put music on the background a little lately. I don't seem like I do enough of that because I've just been so busy. Um, I listen to stuff at the gym. I listen to music when I'm cooking. I listen to music in the morning when I'm getting the dog's food ready and my wife's, you know, lunch and breakfast ready before she goes to work and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, I grab it in when I can. Um, but, you know, I've been listening to a lot of this stuff for so many years. It's, uh, you know, just got to fit it in when you can. Uh, and how often do you listen to favorites? Well, you know what it is? I, I make time to listen to the stuff I need to review. And the favorites are when I'm at the gym, okay, or driving in the car or cooking dinner and stuff like that. That's when I listen to all my favorite stuff. From Jerry C., I can see a little Fonzie, but I also see a lot of Tom Schultz. Okay, well, hey, whatever. Um, from Paul Myers, Rick died when? Yeah, where you been? He died a couple weeks ago. Um, Rick Akasic left us a few weeks ago. From Tor Billen, what Nazareth album do you prefer, Razmanaz or Loud? Well, let's see. They're both great. Mm, man, I love them both. I'm going to give the slight edge to Razmanaz, but I love Loud and Proud. Uh, Aragorn Wanderer, cheers from Athens, Greece. What's going on? Thanks. Gene Phillips, Pete, thanks for mentioning Nazareth, the most underrated band in my opinion. Do you like the live album Snaz? I absolutely do, and that's actually going to be coming up on our classic live album battle, our classic live album war show uh, sometime in the near future. Jeff Young is going to join me on that one because uh, we've got a really good, uh, another really great band that's going against it. Uh, so that's coming up. Mm. Rick Labont, what is your favorite album from Magic Pie and Glass Hammer? Oh, Jesus. Um, Jesus. Dude, I don't know. I've liked everything both bands have released. I don't know if I have a favorite from each. There's so many good ones. I, I mean, Magic Pie has, you know, Glass Hammer's got a lot more albums, but Magic Pie, every album is like essential. They're just, uh, you know, the first one is killer. Um, I love the new one. You know, Glass Hammer, psh, man, had so many good ones. It's hard. I don't know. I can't, can't pinpoint one right now. Uh, from Giancarlo Borges, do you like Dire Straits? I do. Yeah, I, always, I dug Dire Straits. I have all this stuff. Paul Myers, Pete, what's your favorite Cars album? Uh, probably, I don't know. You know, I don't own any Cars albums. I have like a greatest hit set. That's it. I've never been an enormous Cars fan, but I like, you know, I like a lot of their stuff. Um, Candio, maybe, I guess. I don't know. Don't know. Uh, from Aragorn Wonder, have you ever checked the Greek rock scene? Uh, not much. A couple bands here and there, maybe. Uh, from Bongalong, any favorite prog rock ballad? Jesus. I don't know. Off the top of my head, I don't know. From Scott McGregor, will you be seeing Joker? Yeah, at some point. Absolutely. Absolutely. God, this, this stuff is annoying me here. Uh, Joe Patrick, your opinion on Creed? I mean, I kind of dig Creed. They're all right. Um, I wouldn't say I love them. But uh, I like Alter Bridge a hell of a lot better, I'll tell you that much. From Jerry Elias Lorindo, hello, Pete. Did you know about the UFO album's Obsession cover? All the guys are on the cover, not only Michael Schenker. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's like, um, you know, that goes down in uh, album cover lore, right? <laughs> Schenker was just pissed off. He was the only one who didn't have, a, you know, the crazy stuff on his face that he was upset about. Um, what else we got here? What else? Hold on. Johnny Pero, what's going on? How are you, my friend? Oh, uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? What type of microphones are you using for this live broadcast? I am using a blue. Okay. Blue. I highly recommend it. Best hundred bucks you'll ever spend. Um, what else we got here? Pete, did you like Wasp from Paul Myers? Um, you know, I dug them when they first came out a little bit, but I would say I, I never listened to Wasp anymore. They kind of, I got really tired of their whole shtick uh, very early on. But, uh, you know, first couple albums are really good. First couple albums are really good. Uh, Lonnie V, do you have the new Stormwatch box set yet? I'm looking forward to your review of it. I do not. I, I am. I have not bought the last couple of Tull box sets. It's just too. 
you know, how many times am I going to keep buying these toll reissues? I mean, I've, I've already bought the toll discography on CD like three times. So it's like I've kind of picked and choose which one of the, you know, remixes and remasters and all that to get up. So I, I just haven't gotten Stormwatch and I haven't gotten the last couple either. It's just, I mean, just how many times are you going to buy this stuff? Um, what else we got here? What else we got? Uh, from Domeister 200. Hey, Pete, are you a fan of Virgin Steel, especially the older years with Jack Star? Um, I've only heard a little bit of it. It's good. You know, it's good kind of power metal type stuff, you know, classic for the day, I guess. Uh, from Kurt Laxton. Uh, Pete, it always puzzled me why your eye heap isn't bigger in the States. Any thoughts? Uh, you mean right now or back in the day? I mean, back in the day, they were, they were fairly big here. Um, but now, yeah, I don't know. It's it just all those older bands, right? It's just, you know. You got your core fans, and that's about it. But, uh, man, I love Heap. I love them, love them, love them. Uh, Brian New, sir, what do you know about the band Last Autumn's Dream? Nothing. Sorry. Uh, from AZDH85224, hello, Pete. Doug from Chandler, Arizona. Really enjoy your videos. Thank you, sir. From Stingray, hey, Pete, as far as current mainstream bands go, can you think of a single one that is carrying the torch and keeping rock alive to the masses? Um, as far as mainstream goes, uh, well, let's go just a little bit south of the mainstream. Uh, we just talked about Rival Sons before and uh, Alter Bridge. I think both of those bands should be absolutely enormous. And that's some pure rock and roll, pure hard rock right there. That to, Both those bands should be huge. And if I were just to take two, those are the ones. Okay. Uh, what else we got here? What else? From H Ship, have you heard 20 Years of Jethro Tull box set? Absolutely, I have it upstairs. <laughs> From Jerry C. Pete, I left a comment on the Kiss Alive 2 live album battle the other day. Have you thought about doing an album battle pitting album covers against each other? Sadly, that art, 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 art form died a bit with CDs. Uh, I'm not going to do a album cover versus album cover, but I am going to do uh, my fa uh, a show all about my favorite album covers. Uh, so that is coming at some point. Uh, from Nar Larry Naletti, have you heard anything def definitive on Hendrix Albert Hall being released? I have not, but that's been talked about forever. Uh, but if you haven't heard, they just announced it the other day. They are going to release a box set with the entire Fillmore run of the Band of Gypsies. So you're going to get all four shows complete in a box set. I believe that's coming out sometime next month in November. That should be epic, 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 epic. Uh, from Blackbird's Wrath, what rock metal song would you say best summarizes the condition of the United States in today's time? Jesus. Uh, God, I don't know. <laughs> Is there a song titled, uh, We're All in a Deep Pile of Shit? Because that's probably where, that's probably the going learning about the band's history since watching your YouTube channel. You've gotten me into other bands I never heard of, Budgie, etc. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, from Metal Conquest, been listening to a lot of Frigid Pink and Blood Rock. They rock. I'm going to leave out your little F-bomb there. I know you're a busy man, but are you planning on doing more forgotten favorites in the near or later future? Uh, yeah, probably at some point. I usually, I try to save them for when I accumulate cool new rare stuff, which I haven't been lately. Uh, but I may just dig some stuff out of the collection at some point. But uh, it, it's going to be a little while because, you know, my my list of to-dos here for this channel is enormous. We've got the, you know, the live out more going on tournament thing and all that kind of stuff. And I've been traveling so much for work. So um, at some point. Uh, from uh, I am going to Arizona Coyotes versus Bruins tonight. Do you like NHL hockey? Not a hockey fan. Not a hockey fan. From Louis Rossi, 51 West Lake Street, Guilford. Okay. Is that where you live? <laughs> um, I have a friend who lives in Guilford, actually. Uh, from Metal Conquest, I saw that UFO were reissuing Phenomena. Uh, would not surprise me. Would not surprise me. Um... From Aragon Wander, you should really check out uh, Socrates Drank the Cronium. I, I have that. I have the two two CDs by them. Uh, Spiridula and Tripus, I have not heard, um, but I uh, the Socrates stuff I dig. That's pretty good. Uh, know any good jokes? I'm not a joke guy, dude. From Jensen Bell, hey, Pete, have you heard the Frank Marino album Real Live? If not, you should check it out. It's one of the best live albums I've ever heard. Yep, I've had it for years. It's awesome. Uh, from Scott McGregor, how would you differentiate Southern Rock from Country Rock? Well, I mean, you know, there's a lot of overlap there. A lot of overlap. God, this is, I don't know, how does this look to you guys? I mean, to me, it's like I barely see myself on camera because uh, the sun is just blaring and I don't know where else to go. I might go over there, actually. Uh, Southern rock and country rock. Well, you know, country rock has a lot of pedal steel in it. 
Uh, generally is not rocked up much at all. You know, you look at uh, kind of like the Flying Burrito Brothers and, uh, you know, the Eagles and Poco and stuff like that, whereas Southern Rock's got more of a bite to it. All right. And, and uh, you know, um, the lyrics are definitely different. You know, a lot of the Southern Rock bands, they're singing about stuff that's, you know, definitely you know about the south and things like that so i I definitely think there's more much more of a harder rock element to it and not all the southern rock bands you know marshall tucker band were never much of a hard didn't have much of a hard rock side to them other than a couple of couple tunes but um i definitely think uh there's more of like a kind of like a twang to the country rock bands and and a lot of them too came from the uh you know the west coast so um this this kind of like a west coast vibe there as well um, Jamie Hyder, you probably reviewed it and I missed it, but have you heard the new Tool album and thoughts? Yeah, I actually reviewed it on the website. I have not reviewed it here because I tend to only like to review stuff that I have a physical copy of so I can show it and all that good stuff. Uh, I have not done it here because Tool, as of yet, have not come out with an actual physical CD other than that, that high price, ridiculous box set they released, which was sold out like, you know, a half a second after they put it out on sale so uh i dig it it's a little overblown spots but i think it's uh, it's pretty good it's pretty good uh from george dance have you ever heard of the per- performer simon stokes of the black whip thrill band no i have not uh from who else we got here from rob lasante what's going on how are you rob my good friend from not too far from here uh let's see what else Scalagrama Kvalthuson, how are you? Hey, Pete, what do you think about German bands Can and Kraftwerk? Do you like any of this stuff? Uh, hey, you, chill out. Um, I tried to get into Can early on in my prog days. Didn't really do it for me. Uh, and Kraftwerk, don't really do a lot for me either. So, sorry, not, not much into, uh, into that um, either band. Sorry. From Rob Lasante, do a top 10 Robin Trower. I already have, dude. Go into the playlist. Robin Trower, top 10 songs. It's there. At least I'm sure I did. I'm pretty sure I have done that. Right? God, let me think about that now. I don't know. I may have to check into that because now that I'm thinking about it, I'm wondering if I, if, how could I have not done a Robin Trower top 10 songs? I'm almost positive I have. But if not, I'll get on it because uh, he's one of my favorites. And I know Rob is a big fan. Uh, from Kurt Laxton, thanks for replying my question about Heap. I'm always surprised as to how many people don't even know them. Uh, they're my favorite. Well, you know, I think a lot, well, it depends on who you say a lot of people. I think, you know, older folks, you know, <laughs> meaning me and people in my age group, uh, we know he, you know, big time, but, uh, yeah, a lot of younger people just, you know, what are you going to do? It's a lot of classic bands are like that. You know, you walk down the street and you ask, you know, you walk up to five people and you ask them, have you ever heard of Uriah Heap, Thin Lizzy, you know, name a couple more and they're all going to give you blank stares. Uh, sadly, that's just the way it is. Uh, what about a Gino Vanelli rant? A unique artist and real musical genius. Well, considering I've never really listened to much Gino Vanelli, if at all, um, I'm probably not the right guy to do that. Unless you want me to rant about how I don't know anything about him. Um, what else? Mar Hill. I'm probably the biggest Michael Schenker fan ever, but I'm really disappointed with his last five or six studio releases. But live, he's great. Is it? Is it the producer? It's troubling. Well, no, here's the deal. I'm a big Schenker fan, too. Uh, I also like the, the last Michael Schenker Fest album, and I like those the Temple of Rock albums. But the problem with, with Michael is that um, the songs just, you know, overall, and I'm going to say his material since like the beginning of the 90s, overall, he needs he needs someone, you know, ever since the Macaulay Shanker group, uh, he just hasn't had that other really great writer to, you know, hook up with him to put out some great songs. And I think that, uh, and that's kind of always been my problem with Shanker's output over the last, you know, 15, 20, 20 years or so. It's like, you're waiting for the guitar solo and the songs are okay, but nothing spectacular. And what little I've heard off the new album, and again, I'll be getting it relatively soon is that songs are a little lackluster. Guitar solos are great. Um, and that's, that's, that's Shanker, right? It's like, and, and, and he, you listen to his interviews and he talks so much about crafting a perfect guitar solo for every song. Well, it's like at some point you got to, create some good songs right because otherwise people are going to stop listening because you know like you said you could just go see him live and see him play great solos and listen to the classic songs so i don't know i mean i love him to death right um between that and he needs to stop trashing his brother and phil mog all the time it's like god enough god i'm exhausted by it uh where are we how would you rank the beatles solo outputs well as you know um god 
I, I mean, I haven't listened to enough, you know, Lennon, Harrison, and uh, Ringo. I've listened to very little of their solo outputs other than, you know, an album or two here or there. Uh, McCart you know, obviously you guys know I love McCartney and Wings, uh, but since Wings split up, I really haven't listened to much McCartney stuff. So um, I really can't rank them because I don't, I don't have enough experience with them. Johnny Pero, why is there such a big difference in taste of rock between American and European rock fans? Bands that were big in the States like Kansas, April Wine, and BOC didn't do much here and vice versa. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Could it be, you know, lack of touring there? That's probably it. You know, you had some bands who toured here constantly uh, and didn't go over to Europe much at all and vice versa. I mean, look at, I mean, for instance, look at Slade and Status Quo. Barely toured here at all. And nobody here knows them. Right, over over where you are, both those bands are huge. Right, well that's that's the way it goes. I mean, I, I was talking to someone recently from uh, the UK, who were like, "Oh, Grand Funk Railroad were never much of anything here," you know. And you mentioned Kansas, and uh, then it's just well, but here they were enormous. So it, it has a lot to do with that, you know. It's I think touring, especially back in the day, maybe not today, obviously, but back in the day in the seventies and the eighties, touring was everything. Touring was everything. I remember, uh, God, who was I? Some, some major bands. Uh, I can't remember now. Was it Priest? Was it? I don't remember. Maybe it was Priest. It was. It was a while there where Priest were were um, focusing all their efforts here on the U.S. and were not touring back home, and their album sales suffered for it. So, I mean, I think that has a lot to do, especially back in the day. That has a lot to do with it. A lot to do with it. All right, what else we got? Fraser Dawson. Yes, I have heard the New Angel. We talked about it before. Um, review coming soon. What else we got here? Not sure if you know much about New Hampshire from Woolpit Green, but would you recommend any bands from New Hampshire, especially in Epsom? I don't know. I don't. I live in New York. I don't really know anything about local New Hampshire bands. Sorry. Uh, Blackbird's Wrath. I've got a hypothetical idea. A one-time Deep Purple Mark III reunion with Blackmore, Coverdale, and Hughes. Tony Banks in place of John Lord and Les Banks of Ian Pace can't be part of it. Thoughts? I'd pay to see that. Um, here's my issue, though. Um, I love well, Richie Blackmore is my favorite guitar player of all time. For me, his classic stuff with Deep Purple and Rainbow, I love. Not into the Blackmore's Night thing, and got to be. And I got to be honest with you, I'm a little kind of not overly impressed with the stuff he's done with this latest incarnation of Rainbow, uh, because to me, it just Richie doesn't seem to have the fire to do it anymore, and it's almost like he's just doing it to do it, like he's just kind of going through the motions and I just don't know if Richie how much he would bring to the table for a reunion like that right now that's the sad truth he's like what he's 75 I like to see Coverdale together again hell yeah because I tell you he, uh, Hughes still sings great all right amazing Coverdale while does while he does a fine job uh, I think that you know his vocal limitations are what they are I think the two of them would complement each other so well all right, so well, and I would love to see them do something again. I'm surprised it hasn't happened, to be honest with you. And you know what? I love to see Tony Banks. Yeah, but I mean, there's probably other guys who would probably do that Rip Roar and John Lord thing even better at this point. You know, let's 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 drag uh, Ken Hensley out, you know, or have you know Eric Norlander do it or whatever. It's like I think, but I think you know Les Banks. Psh, from what I understand, that guy can still play, right? Frazier six nine. Hey Pete, good afternoon from the UK. Awesome show. I'm definitely going to buy the Hendrix Fillmore box set. But yeah, you get whatever format you want, get it because I think it'll be great. Uh, from Doctor Who, what, where, any op, any opinion about Parliament Funkadelic or any funk? Uh, I love that early Parliament Funkadelic stuff. It's very very cool. That's clad. It's so like seventies, right? But it's just awesome stuff. Um, I dig it. I dig it. I have a bunch of their stuff on CD. Thomas Shipoff, hey Pete, what's going on, Thomas? How are you? Uh, what else? What else? What else? Um, uh, Rob Lasante, I meant albums. Oh, you want me to talk about my favorite Trower albums? Okay. Um, all right. So probably For Earth Below is my favorite, followed by Bridges Size, followed by the first album, twice removed from yesterday. I'm not going to include the live stuff here. Followed by um, Long Misty Days, followed by... Um, Oh, oh no, I forgot. I forgot about Victims of the Future. I mean, Victims of the Fury, sorry. <laughs> Gary Moore on the mind. Uh, Victims of the Fury before Long Misty Days. Uh, and then um, back it up. Then probably the uh, the BLT album. Then the second album with Jack Bruce. That's probably 10 right there, right? Yeah, those are those are definitely my favorites. Um, you know, all the other ones are cool too. You know, 
but uh, all those seventies and the early eighty ones are my favorites. But yeah, that covers it there. Uh, let's see. AZDH eight five two two four. What is your favorite guitar pedals? Mine is a full tone OCD Sans Sap Guitar Two MXR Carbon Copy. Uh, well, I think my favorite guitar pedal of all time has been my Crybaby Wah Wah, um, followed closely by uh, my Ibanez Tube Screamer, which is just great. Love that to death. Uh, I've got a um, a uh, Fuzz, Jimi Hendrix Fuzz. I like that a lot. I got a Dunlop uh, Univibe, which I dig quite a bit. Those are probably my favorites. Got to have the Crybaby, though. Um, do you do radio? I do not. I've guessed it on radio shows, but I don't do radio on my own. Uh, from Thomas, what would be your favorite albums from bands that were recorded with a non-classic lineup? For example, Burn by Deep Purple. Thanks for the great videos. I mean, yeah, Burn is damn great. Um, all right, let's see. Let's kind of jog through my memory. Heaven and Hell by Black Sabbath. All right, that's probably top of the list. Burn, Burn is up there as well. Um, Trick of the Tailor, Wind and Wuthering by Genesis. Um, I love Yes Drama quite a bit. Yeah, there's some for you right there. Uh, Lonnie V, Pete, what is your opinion on people who burn CDs for their friends of albums they either don't own or are not currently on CD? I mean, it happens, right? It's, it's what it is. I've got friends who, you know, ask me from time to time for stuff like that. It's, I don't, you know, what are you going to do? You know, back in the day, I, back in the day, I would have said, no, you go, you should go, you know, support the artist and go buy it. But God, today it's like, you know, you, who can keep up with that stuff anymore? You know, I still buy, you know, when I, I have plenty of people who offer me to make me CDRs or stuff or send me files and things I'm like no, it's okay. I'll buy it. This, this is who I am. Right. Uh, from George dance. Well, I lost you. Hold on. Pete, do you know enough about the birds to do a top 10 songs in the music? Unfortunately not. Sorry. Um, piracy is not illegal anymore. Uh, Luis Roberto, theme, top 10 songs, Ingray Malmsteen. Do you like him? Yes, he's on my list to do. That'll be coming. That'll be coming. Um, Crew Day 2, best deep purple guitarist, Blackmore, Bolin, or Morse. I mean, you know, I mean, Blackmore is the guy, right? Um, I love Steve Morse. I love Tommy Bolin. I, I, you know, Tommy Bolin only did one album, and I love Tommy Bolin's playing to death, but, um, you know, he only did one album, so I can't really rate him. So I, I, I rank Morse behind Blackmore. Okay. That classic stuff with Blackmore, you can't beat it. From Dr. What Nowhere, Dr. Who What Where, Op, op mean opinion, not option. Uh, top five albums, Jeff Beck Group Truth. Oh, do, do I mean that's a top five album? Not with me, but I love it. I love that early Jeff Beck stuff. Uh, this dude sounds like Ray Manzarek of The Doors. Okay. I don't know what Ray Manzarek sounds like. I don't know if I've ever heard him talk much to say. Uh, Dallas Space Corps. I recommend the Wasp albums, Crimson Idol, and Holy Terror and Dominator. Quite different from the earlier material. Excellent hard and heavy rock. I mean, I've heard uh, the Crimson Idol. It's okay. Uh, Pete, have you ever heard of Dust? Yep, I own both their albums on CD. Dig them. Great early, mid-70s, heavy rock. Uh, from George, have you heard the new uh, Who album yet? No, like I said a couple minutes ago, I have not heard it yet. Um most underrated prog album that you can think of by Crawford, uh, Glissa Devil. Most underrated. Jesus. Probably, probably that Cathedral album, Stained, Stained Glass Stories. Pretty sure that's the name of, name of it, Stained Glass Stories. I think that's what it's called. It's a Connecticut band from the early 70s. Very rare prog album. If you haven't heard it, check it out. It's great. Uh... Fraser Dawson, have you heard the new angel? How many times am I going to be asked that question? Guys, I have heard the new angel. I'm getting ready to review it soon. All right. Stop asking. <laughs> From Dave Corlang, Pete, your classic live album war is so exciting. Watching Tull opening the show. When will you be putting Bursting Out in the Ring? It's coming. I'm waiting for my friend Jeff Young to get not stop being so busy so he can join me on that one. He has already requested that. So that's coming up. Patience, people, patience. Uh, Corky Duke, ever get into the Flower Kings? Yep. I've talked about them plenty on here. I love the Flower Kings. Uh, from Eliphas Desney. Hey, Pete, who is your godfather of fusion? Mine is David Axelrod. Okay. Uh, Miles Davis. Dude. That's all you need to, that's all I need to say. Miles Davis. From T Dog. Hey, Pete, what's your opinion on novelty rock bands such as The Darkness, Ailstorm, Gwar, etc.? Um, eh, you know, 
War is all right, I guess. I, I don't need to own anything by them. I've seen them live a couple times. They're fun. Uh, Ale Storm, I just saw recently for the first time. They're okay. Not really my cup of tea. They're okay. Uh, the Darkness, I've heard very little of. They're all right, from what I've heard. All right. Uh, David Bell, look when Queen stopped touring the States, they became non-existent for album sales. Absolutely. There's another perfect example. That's just the way it is. If it, back in those in the 70s and the 80s, if you did not tour in a, in, a, in, a, um, in, a, in a country or whatever, your album sales suffered and people forgot about you. That's just the way it went back there back then. Uh, let's see. Sheer to waste. Please talk about the amazing UK band, The Fix, who had major success in the 80s, in the US in the 80s. Yeah, I mean, you know, I was kind of dug the fix a little bit. I have a couple of friends who were big into them. And then, uh, I don't know, guy, like maybe six months ago, Jeff Young was like, uh, I was guesting on one of his radio, on his radio show and he was playing a bunch of fix songs. I'm like, God, I forgot how much I love these songs. So I went out and got a really, really good uh, fix compilation and uh, love it. A lot of great tunes, man. They were different. And I really dig them a lot. Uh, let's see. Where do we leave off? We're going to have, we're getting here a little long in the tooth here, guys. So I tell you what, we're going to hold off on the rest of the questions and I'm going to go into, um, who is making it onto round two of our classic live album war. Okay. Tournament. All right. So, uh, here we go. Ready? These are the albums that have progressed and are going to, to the second round. So we've got uh, Genesis live, deep purple made in Japan, thin Lizzy live and dangerous. UFO, Strangers in the Night, The Who, Live at Leeds, Yes, Yes Songs, Chicago, Live at Carnegie Hall, Ted Nugent, Double Live Gonzo, Grand Funk Railroad, the live album, uh, ACDC, If You Want Blood, You've Got It, Peter Frampton, Frampton Comes Alive, The Allman Brothers Band at the Fillmore East, Pat Travers Band, Go For What You Know, Leonard Skinner, One More From The Road, Foghat Live, Uriah Heap Live, Iron Maiden Live After Death, Black Sabbath Live Evil, Rainbow On Stage, Motorsmith, uh, Motorsmith, Motorhead, No Sleep Till Hammersmith, Camel Alive Record, Kiss Alive, Journey Captured, The Tubes, What Do You Want From Live, Frank Zappa, Roxy and Elsewhere, Hawkwind Space Ritual, Bob Seger Live Bullet, James Gang Live, Wishbone Ash Live Dates, Little Feet Waiting for Columbus, Renaissance Live at Carnegie Hall, Alice Cooper, The Alice Cooper Show, Kansas 2 for the Show, Blue Oyster Cult, Some Enchanted Evening, White Snake Live in the Heart of the City, Free Live, Yes, Yes Shows, and I think that's it for right now. Yep, that's where we're at. So that's who's making it on to round two. We still have a bunch more to go, so this whole tournament's going to last a while. So, guys, we're at about an hour, just under an hour, so thank you all for uh, joining. This has been a lot of fun, and uh, we're going to try and do this every Saturday if we can. I'll uh, try and shoot for 9.30 a.m., all right, Eastern Standard Time. So uh, if I didn't get to your stuff, sorry, can only do so many. Guys, remember, we have a lot of people asking multiple, 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 multiple questions. So for everybody to get their questions answered, uh, you guys got to stop firing off like, you know, the dozens of questions, all right? We need to just keep it to one or two per each, uh, and that'll give everybody their chance. So um, see you guys in a little while because I got a uh, classic live album more coming up soon. So we'll see you. Have a good one. Thanks again, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.